Hey, good morning. Good morning, Freedom Church. Happy Easter. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys are doing great. I see some of you guys already jumping into the comments already. Say hello. That's how we know you're here. So go ahead and type in and, and let us know that you're here. Um, I see Mario already. Happy Easter, Mario. Um, glad to see you guys. I know who this is. Polly Wogs, good to see you. Maria, hello. Charlie says hello. I hope you're doing good. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us this morning. Esperanza, happy Easter. Kimberly, good to see you. I've been, I've been uh, uh, praying for you and Chuck. I hope you guys are doing good. It's good to see you guys. Happy Easter, everybody. Let us know you're here. There's Elizabeth, the Polings, the Whites. Good morning, good morning. Lainey, good to see you. Aaron, happy Easter. Becky, happy Easter. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, guys, I'm so thankful that you guys are here today. Glad to see you guys online. Okay, we got a pretty simple Easter question, comment question to get us started. Um, what is your favorite Easter candy? Favorite Easter candy, put it in the comments. Uh, give it some love. Let us know what is your favorite Easter candy. Rita, what is, what is it? Cadbury cream eggs, full size. The little ones melt too quickly. Full okay. size Cadbury eggs. Full size Cadbury eggs. And have you had some already? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I love uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, the, the Easter bunnies. I, I cannot pass those up. Yes. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, you can't go wrong with those. I see some. Oh, yes. Okay, good, good, good. I see what you guys are saying. Jan says... Uh, Reese's eggs. We're on the same same page, Jan. But it's beaches and, and Reese, Reese's eggs from previous weeks. Kristen, I see you there with the the eggs. All right, good, good, good. Everybody's got the eggs. Anyone with with uh, uh, peeps or anything? Matzo peeps. balls from from Chuck. <laughs> yeah, raise your hand if you like peeps. I always Nobody. wonder who loves those. Nobody. <laughs> Many Reese's. Okay, okay, I see you there. Okay, Kimberly, you got the uh, the Reese's eggs there. Oh, the robin eggs. Yeah, I've already made myself a little sick with those. Some for the boys' Easter eggs, some for mommy. <laughs> hey, uh, do me a favor while you're on here too. Go ahead and click share. Share the, share this on your on your stream. Let other people know. Um, we're gonna have a great time this morning. We got a great uh, set of worship. We got some surprise guests coming in and a message of hope that we'll be sharing too. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're we're just um, here's here's my heart. You could be anywhere right now. I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of churches uh, that are celebrating Easter online right now, and you're here with us. And so I just want to say thank you. I think God's going to do something very powerful in the next um, uh, 45 minutes or so, and um, we're excited to see what he's going to do in us, but also through us. So um, again, just um, say hello in the comments, share this. Rita, you want to you wanna share anything <laughs> with them too before we bust into our countdown? No, go easy on the candy like Jeremiah warned. Don't make yourself sick. Okay. Hope you guys have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, we got a, a trivia countdown that's going to that's gonna come across. So go ahead and comment along with it. I'm going to turn down the sound so it doesn't blow you guys um, away. And then we will jump right in. All right, here we go. Enjoy this trivia. We'll be back in about three minutes.
Hey everybody, I am so thankful that you are here uh, joining us for Easter. Our kids, um, I love our, our kids at Freedom and I love what's been happening this week. We had an Easter egg hunt, a virtual Easter egg hunt and um, you guys um, blew me away with how well you guys participated. Uh, we'll be announcing the winners of that uh, tomorrow. Some of you guys, um, well, let's just say this. We had people who, who participated and they did a great job and it was awesome. And then some of you guys took it to, you took it to another level and you know who you are if you did that because some of you guys, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know we had that many, that many eggs going on. But anyway, we had a lot of fun with that. We've been having a lot of fun um, in our every weekday at 10 a.m. If you don't know this, inside uh, the Freedom page, we have a group called uh, The Great Los Alamos Adventure for Kids and Mr. Seth and the kids get together. It's live. At 10 a.m., it's interactive. There's missions. There's uh, worship. There's games. There's prizes every single day. A $10 uh, uh, prize giveaway every day, um, and so we do that every weekday uh, online. And uh, families are having a blast. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and do that. I also want to share with you just some giving stories because you guys are so stinking generous. I got on the uh, Love Los Alamo shirt. Um, and that's our that's like our DNA. We just want to love on this town. No strings attached. Just love people. And um, in this time of need with COVID-19, um, we have been stepping up uh, and you have been stepping up and just meeting needs. And basically it's see a need, meet a need. Um, and so um, plenty of people have been uh, reaching out and saying, hey, I need some help. And we have a care finder. Let me go ahead and show this to you real fast. I want to take you to um, my uh, my browser here on our web page here. Um, you can go here, scroll here, and you'll see the Freedom Care Finder. You can click on that, and then uh, from there, um, you say, I, I, I can help, I need help. If you want to help somebody, you can. If you need help, and then if you click on that, it's going to scroll you to a form, and you can fill that out. And anybody that needs some meets needs. So we've given away thousands, thousands, and thousands of dollars just in recent weeks to people who are in need, people who don't have enough uh, food, uh, to make it through. Uh, some of them haven't been able to make it through the night. Hey, we need some stuff tonight. And we've been able to get them some money. Thank you guys for doing that. And, and as this goes on for who knows how long, we're going to be there to help. We want to help. We want to love on this town. And we're just so thankful to each and every one of you. Some of you guys, you're just calling people. You're just like, hey, I'm going to, get, I'm going to give you a call. I'm going to go deliver groceries. You're giving of your time. You're giving of your words. Uh, and you're giving of your finances. I just want to say thank you. As a pastor, I can't, I can't ask for anything more than what you're already doing. I just want to say keep it, keep it up. And finally, if you're new with us today, if you're new with us here at Freedom, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, again, I'm excited for what we have planned. Do me a favor. If you want to know more about freedom, if this is your first time here, we would love to connect with you. The easiest way to do that is just drop the word connect, um, in the comments, just all caps, just write in connect. And, uh, what we'll do is, uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll touch base with you and we'll, we'll help you in just pointing in a few next steps just to help you get plugged in maybe on some of these online con communities. Maybe we could pray for you. Maybe there's a financial need or or some other type of need and you just need some help. Hey, just type in the word connect. That's going to be like the key word uh, for us to just say, hey, we'll connect with you today or tomorrow and follow up and just say hello. Um, and then also, well, I'll just keep on going after that. After the after church too, we can connect because we got a Zoom party. We'll drop a link in there for a Zoom after party as well. What I want to do, I want to jump into some worship. I want to worship with you guys. We have some special guests in worship. Um, the Freedom Team, um, uh, uh, Rita and Teo, they're going to kick us off uh, with a little bit of worship. During this time of worship, you can do whatever you want. You can stand up and sing. That's what I do. Like freak your, your dogs out or your kids out. Like what, is, what are they doing singing in the living room? Go ahead and do that. Um, 
if you're like, ah, I don't want to do that. That's fine. That's fine. I, I, I get it. I understand. Like drop uh, the praise hand emojis on there. Or if a lyric comes across, type that into the comments and, and just highlight, hey, this is this is speaking to me. Or or what I really like is, is when you're just dropping in, like I'm thankful today for. What are you thankful for? So as we sing and we worship, maybe you're singing, drop a comment in there that says, I'm thankful for maybe it's a person, tag them and say, I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for my dad. I'm thankful for whoever. This is your time to maybe encourage other people during this time of worship. We're going to sing a couple songs um, and then I'm going to preach a sermon and we're going to have a great time. But let 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 God just speak to you during this time. Be blessed and, and um, let's jump into worship together. they had prepared they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance so they went in but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus as they stood there puzzled two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes the women were terrified Women were terrified. They bowed their faces to the ground. And the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead? 
for someone who is alive. He is in here. He is risen. Hey, thank you, Shane, my friend Shane and my friend Mikey. You guys did a great job sharing the verses for today. And also my, bo my boys, Jeremiah and Charlie. Thank you guys, my friends, for uh, sharing a little bit about the Easter story in those verses. I love when our kids can help out like that. Uh, listen, nobody expected nobody in when they on that Sunday morning when they went to that tomb. Uh, one of my favorite phrases looking at the Easter story, it's, it's recorded in, in all four accounts of the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But in Luke, he records this one saying, they said, uh, why do you look um, for the living Jesus? Why do you look for the living among the dead? And that always makes me think about just in my own life, how, how many times I'm, I'm searching for something. And many times it's, it's, it's not in bad things, but it's in the things that don't satisfy. I, I'll look for things in, in relationships. I'll look for things in finances. I'll look for things for success or knowledge Good looks. I want more, more hair. Uh, uh, good works. If I just do enough, and all of those, we know none of those things are necessarily bad in and of themselves, but they don't satisfy the soul. Why do you look for the living among the dead? And what he, what he's pointing to is Jesus. Obviously, obviously, it's Jesus. In this time of COVID nineteen, I know there's a lot of real stress and real anxiety, real fears panic and uncertainty and and I want us to be searching for the living among the, among the living let's, let's go search for Jesus so what I want to ask we're going to sing one more song my good friend Rudy he's from from Haiti he is uh, married to Caroline they live in Mississippi right now but they we partner also um, in in helping in Haiti that's our global mission and he's going to lead us in another song of worship and so during this time of worship again uh, you can sing, you can raise the praise hands, but I want you to uh, maybe put out a prayer, take a little bit of risk here, and just say, what is it that I need from God right now? What, what do you need to hear from Him? What's the next step that you're looking for Him? Like, what is it that you need? And and if someone puts something in there, just, just let's... let's Let's reply with a bunch of prayer, prayers. Like, I'm praying for that. I'm praying for that. I'm praying for that. I'm praying for that. This is the time to say, I'm looking for this. I need something that's going to satisfy. And let's be the church and let's pray together. Don't make this a passive time. Let's, let's do this together. So I'm going to sing one more song and then we'll jump into, jump into the sermon. Oh, what a Savior He's in the wonderful Christ is risen. Let's bow down before Him, for He is Lord. Oh, sing Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! Because he lives. 
face I could face tomorrow Because he lives Oh, fear is gone Because I know All right, if you, I want to welcome you back. Thank you guys so much for singing and worshiping with us. If you haven't already, we're gonna, I'm going to share a message with you, but if you haven't already, please click the share button right now. There's going to be someone uh, who's scrolling through your, your feed either right now or, or uh, later today. They're going to need to hear this message. They're going to need to hear this message of hope. They're going to be struggling with some fears and some panic, having some questions, and um, um, they're going to come across your posts. Um, and lives are going to be changed. So um, do me a favor, click the share button right on your phone right now. Go ahead and share that. Um, somebody needs to hear this message. As you're doing that too, comment here on my question uh, for the sermon intro. What is the coolest prize that you've ever won? You ever entered into a contest or maybe it was like at a, at a carnival or something like that and you played one of the carnival games and, and you won a prize? What's the, what's the coolest prize uh, that you've ever won. I remember my wife and I, we were at a, a, a minor league baseball game and we got called out into the field to do a, a competition. And uh, uh, we ended up winning like a, a, a vacation for two to Puerto Penasco. We never even went to it, uh, but that was that was a pretty cool prize. Uh, so if you ever won like a cruise or something like that, uh, share just a little bit in the comments, talk back and forth about what has been like the coolest prize you ever won. Um, I remember we went to Legoland over Christmas break um, into New Year's, and um, as a family, we we went and we we spent two days at Legoland, and we came across one of these things. I want to show this to you because um, they have these all around. If you go to Six Flags or or if you go to Legoland or uh, Disney or something like that, where you can play the games, and they cost like an, an outrageous amount of money. And our son, uh, he had some vacation money to spend, and so he saw these prizes up there. He's like, I want to play, I want to win, and. We're kind of telling him like, eh, I don't know, do you see? And it was $10. It was $10 to play this game. We're like, dude, are you sure? One, uh, it's going to be hard to win. Two, if you get it, you're going to be excited for about like five minutes. And then after a day, you're going to be tired of this pride. But he was like animate that he's going to do it. And we're like, okay, well, here is, uh, here's the $10. And lo and behold, he won. <laughs> he actually won. He hit the prize and he won. But you want to know what he what he didn't expect? <laughs> and it's not we kind of we kind of knew this. He didn't he didn't win what you're seeing right there. This this is uh that's what he won. This little guy. You should have seen oh man, you should have seen his face when this is what the guy hit for $10 at Legoland. He erupted. He bawled. He, ah, 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 you know, he was so upset because he thought he was going to get one thing. 
He had done what he was supposed to do. He thought he was going to get one thing, and then he didn't get what he expected. And I think for a lot of us, we can, we're, we're kind of in that same spot, especially when it comes to God or especially when it comes to church. He, I mean, he was angry at us. He thought we had tricked him, had lied. He wanted his money back. He started questioning us as parents. Who are you? I don't even know you. Like he was, he was upset. So we've saved this as a memento because we've been like, dude, do you remember this? Do you remember this? Anytime he wants something, you know, I want to go to the store. I want to spend money on this. And we're like, dude, do you remember this? And it's worked out well so far. But I think for us as adults, we kind of have that same, um, that, that same thing where we've had some expectations. Hey, if God's on my side, if God's all powerful, if God's all loving, then, then why this? Why this in my life? Why am I struggling with this divorce? Why am I struggling with this temptation? Why does this anger just keep coming on me again and again and again? Why COVID-19? And it's not what I expected. Who are you, God? Who are you, Jesus? That's kind of the essence of the question. That's really what I want to ask today. And if you're asking that question today, I want to say, good. You're in a great place to ask questions. At Freedom Church, I don't want to be one who, who condemns people for, for doubting or, or asking questions. I believe on the other side of your doubts, if you would lean in, is discovery. So we want to ask questions here. We want to lean into those. Jesus' best friend, Peter, <laughs> he found himself in a scenario like this. If you've read through uh, any of the gospel accounts, Peter, Jesus' best friend, on Friday night when Jesus was arrested, that was not what Peter expected. He was expecting the Messiah, the King, and Peter denied even knowing Jesus. He saw him get arrested. He saw him go on trial. He knew what was coming. He was, he was in big trouble, and Peter was his best friend. He knew he, his life was on the line too, and so he walked away denying even knowing him. Peter, this is the same Peter. I want to show you this verse. I want to show you this verse. Look at this. Earlier in, in Matthew 16, as they, this was well before Jesus was arrested, a few years earlier. And Jesus says, I want to start the church. But he starts asking people, it's like, who do people say that I am? This question of who is Jesus? And Peter responds, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. At one point, Peter was like, you're the one, man. There's no one else. Who are we going to go to? Yet circumstances came up. Circumstances came uh, in his way and he walked away. He stepped away because it didn't line up with what he had expected. I want to look at some of your uh, um, um, prizes that you won. Kay says, my aunt won a stereo years ago at a dance. Um, $1,800 at a one cent slot machine. That's, a, that's a, 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 an excellent payoff there. Uh, 2750 on a daily four pick. Wow, there's uh, some good. So, uh, two layered cake in a cakewalk in the third grade. Well, congratulations, Sarah, on that cakewalk. That is awesome. I wonder if you guys have ever walked away from church or from God or from Jesus. Can you, can you be a little bit vulnerable in the, in the comments with me? It's okay, we are at church. I have. If I was commenting right now, I'd say, yeah, I left the church. Um, I, let us know if you have. I just, I, I want to see, you can just put, yes, I have. Maybe you want to share your story just a little bit. As a, as, a, as a teenager, I grew up going to church all the time, but I didn't understand it. Like, I, I knew it, but it just didn't quite make sense to me. Um, I saw some things go down in the church that I didn't like, and I just made a decision. This wasn't on the church, this was on me. I just walked away. I kind of have this love-hate relationship with the church right now. Like, I am a pastor of a church, but I'm super skeptical of the church. I'm super skeptical of church uh, people. Um, and some of us, maybe we've walked away because of an event in our lives. Maybe there was a, something you could point back to. When that happened, mm, I walked away. Have you ever walked away? I see some of you guys. I see Lanny saying, I have. Shelly, I have. Martha, Jason, yeah, I see you guys. Uh, Aaron, I see that you said, I have. Yeah, plenty of us. We've all walked away. Some of us, maybe we walked away um, uh, because it was a person. When, when Maybe it was an event, it was a person. Maybe some of us, we walked away uh, with science. 
I mean, we live in a science town. I want to read, I want to read you uh, something from uh, Stephen Hawking. He passed away a couple years ago. Brilliant mind. Brilliant mind. And some of us maybe have walked away um, because of science. Now, I love science, but I want, to, I want to read this to you, what Stephen Hawking said. I got a couple quotes that I want to pull from him. He said, before we understand science, it is natural to believe God created the universe. But now science offers a more convincing exclamation, or explanation. In another quote, in another article, he says, I regard the brain as a computer, which will stop working when, all, when its components fail. There's, there is no heaven or afterlife or for broken down computers. That is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. For some of us, maybe we've walked away because of science. And is it true? Like, here's the question. Who, who is Jesus? <laughs> who, is, who is God? Do we even need God? I think that's kind of what he's even getting at there. Do we even need him? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we don't. Maybe science has it all figured out. Like, I want to ask these questions in dialogue because I, I, I don't want to gloss over, over any of these things. And for some of you guys, kind of, like, kind of panicking. Can the pastor say these things? Well, let's talk about this. All right. If we live in a godless world, we have to acknowledge a few things in that. First, if we live in a godless world, there is no you. As he said, we're, you're just you're a, your brain's a computer, <laughs> ones and zeros, uh, cells. That's it. Your biology. I once had a student. He he told me he's like um, I said, hey, you're just biology. All you are is a clump of cells in a godless world. And he's like, well, I must be one sexy clump of cells then. And we're like, all right, dude, you got it. <laughs> but if in the reality of of if we live in a godless world, if that's the reality, then there is no you. You're just a, a cells that get activated for 50, 60, 70 years, and then they just stop being active like a computer. You also have to check the box that there is no such thing as value. It's everything, if everything is just a clump of cells, then you have no value. Your kid has no value. Your, your, your spouse or, or, or your, your parents or those people who are, there, there is no, no value, no such thing. It's arbitrary. It's just made up. There is no real thing as value in a godless world. And also you have to, this is the one that I really struggle with. There's no such thing as justice. That, that morality component that says right and wrong. What, what's in a godless world, what's just? What's unjust? What you end up with is I have my justice. You have your justice. Rich people have their justice. Majority rules have their justice. Democrats have their justice. Republicans have their justice. Nazis, ISIS, like everybody has their own justice. And reality is there is no justice. And if you're here and you're an atheist today, I'm not trying to bag on you or anything like that at all. I want to have conversations about these things. But to boil some of these things down, you got to check some of these boxes if we live in a godless world. Stephen Hawking even said that. He's like, we're just computers. There is no after. It's just it. You're done. But here's what I know. Atheist, agnostic, Christian, whether you walked away from the church or another, it doesn't matter who you are. Nobody lives like that. Nobody has ever lived, not even Stephen Hawking, has ever lived like there is no you. Nobody's ever lived like there, there is no value. No, people have value. No one has ever lived as if there is no such, such thing as justice. And if you really put your faith in that, in a godless world, here's what I also know. You're like, well, I still believe that. You hope not. You hope not. Because we do not live that way. Who needs God? <laughs> Who needs God? Perhaps we all do. Perhaps God is our only hope in this whole scheme of things. So maybe today you're like, okay, maybe I can't quite check the atheist box. I'm not quite ready to check the Christian box. The, the atheist one, I kind of see that it would take more faith. That seems ironic, but it would take more faith to believe in a godless world than it does one with God in it. Which brings me back to Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? See, 
Peter had said he was the Messiah, and then he walked away when it got tough, when the circumstances weren't there. But there was an event. There was something. That's not the whole story. That's not the whole story. Your story, you shared a little bit about why you walked away, but that's not the whole story. You're here today. What's, you have more to the story, and there was more to Peter's story. As it goes on, there was an event that took place. This is, this is what our hope lies in, in who Jesus is. On Sunday morning, on Friday, Jesus died. On Saturday, there was nothing. They were scared. They were confused. Circumstances didn't line up. Why, God? Who are you? We just gave up everything to follow you. You're questioning God. Who are you? And then on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, those ladies went to the tomb and they found that tomb empty. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's alive. He is risen. Amen. Somebody, you can shout it out, put a fire emoji in there. He's alive. And they went and they said, now go and tell the disciples, including Peter. Peter had had a, a bad few days. The last time we saw Peter, he had denied Jesus. Hey, you're the, you're, you're God. You're the Messiah. You're the one. Oh, I don't even know who he is. And he, he, he went away crying and weeping. And he said, go tell Peter too. Make sure Peter knows that Jesus is alive. And he's going ahead. He's going to meet you in Galilee. You'll see him there just as I told you before he died. And all of a sudden, do, 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 do. light bulbs start clicking. They start getting excited. And these guys start changing the world. The question of the hour is... Who is Jesus? And is this true? Because if it's, if it's not, we're, this is worthless and this is a joke and we need to just turn it off and go. But if it's true, if this resurrection thing is true, it changes everything. Which means we got three options when it comes to Jesus. One, he's a liar. Like he's the greatest liar of all time. Like more than the Houston Astros, more than the New England Patriots. Sorry, Astros and Patriots fan. <laughs> all right. Jesus would top them off. He's lying. If he said these things about himself, gathered this huge following of people and let them off on this thing that he knew he was lying about, he's the, he's the greatest liar of all time. Well, option one, that is an option. Two, he's a lunatic. Dude's just absolutely lost his mind and needs some serious... Um, mental therapy and help or option three it's true it's true i wonder i wonder what brought you back the resurrection brought uh peter back i wonder i wonder you're back here today if you wouldn't mind sharing in the comments you said hey i left but what what's brought you back was it an event was it a person what is what are some of the things that have a line that maybe have brought you back as, they, as, as we quite a question who Jesus is and what, and what it is, maybe, maybe someone's like, well, maybe he didn't actually die. Maybe there was no resurrection. Maybe he didn't die. Well, let's just think about that. Because think about the time, first century Rome. Death was a sport for Rome. Okay, they, if there was one thing they knew how to do, it was kill people. And death by crucifixion was one of their, 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 the most bloodiest, goriest things that you can imagine. So, yeah, he died. What about, maybe there wasn't a, a resurrection. Maybe the disciples stole the body. Listen, the disciples, would, if, if, if that's kind of what they wanted people to believe. But if the disciples, they had no incentive to carry this on. There was no power play here. There was no political agenda. There was no finances. In fact, these guys all died. Uh, pretty much all of them died. Brutal deaths and executions they gave their lives for this thing there's one thing they had no incentive to carry this on if you think about these disciples unless it was true unless in the face of adversity you think about who came to the tomb first women if you knew anything about women in the first century and i, I what little i know was that basically they were lower class it's like slaves, like barely even considered human. No dignity. If you were going to create a resurrection story, you certainly wouldn't have women being the first one to report it. They would be considered the most untrustworthy ones. But yet, maybe, 
Maybe that's in there because it's true. Hey, Luke, as you're writing this down, who was that? Oh, that was Mary. And Mary? Yeah. Here, he pass this on. You go talk to Mary yourself. You saw her. Oh, that was Peter. He chopped off Malchus's ear the night Jesus got arrested. Why is Malchus named? <laughs> Why in this random story, when Jesus gets arrested, Peter chops off one of the guards' ears that goes to arrest him. His name's Malchus. Why does Malchus get a name drop in there? Maybe because Malchus was an eyewitness too. Maybe it was as they were passing these documents around. They didn't know it was the Bible. They're just like, you got to know this. You got to know this. You got to know this. And they pass it around. They're like, hey, go to Jerusalem. Talk to Malchus. <laughs> he was an eyewitness too. He saw it. And these guys went and they changed the world. Why? Because it was true. Because it was true. Why did I come back to Jesus? So I had an undeniable encounter with him. I, unlike the disciple, I didn't get to see it, eyewitness. But I walked away, going my own route, going after what I thought was living among the dead, and I came up thirsty. I came up th starving. It never satisfied. And then Jesus, he came into my life, 2003 in August, in the middle of the night. I'll never forget that night. He said, Mike, what are you fighting for? What are you fighting so hard to hold on to? And it was in that moment that I said, I'm done. I'm done fighting. I'm done running. I've been running for eight years. And I surrendered. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live by faith for you. I, and it was an undeniable moment for me. I wonder what brought you back to Jesus. Have you had an undeniable moment? And, and then part of it was this story. The resurrection. That is the one thing that Christianity is, has been, and always will be built off of. If the resurrection didn't happen, then, then again, all of this is a farce. <laughs> People ask Jesus all the time, They're like, who are you, Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Who are you? And John 8 says, who do you think you are? Jesus answered him. He says, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham, one of the guys way back in Genesis, he said, before him, before he was even born, I am. And that right there, those were fighting words. Because when he said, I am, he basically just said, I said, I am God. And it says at that point, this is in John 8, they picked up stones to throw at him. Why did they do that? Because they, he said he claimed to be God. And they're like, nope, that's blasphemy. He's got to die. Jesus claimed very clearly. He claimed very clearly to be God. He said a lot of I am statements. He said, I'm the light of the world. I'm the bread of life. I'm the gates. I'm the good shepherd. I am. He basically said, I am what you need in every season of life, including this one right now for you. I am what you need in every season of life. This is who Jesus claimed to be when you read about him. What did he say? After, after the resurrection, they started writing these things out. We got to know what he said. We got to know what he did. We got to tell other people. Jesus knows what you need right now. He can be what you need right now if you'll give it over to him. He has one more I am, one more great I am. He says, I am willing. I am willing. See, this whole story, your whole story, when you walked away, now you're, you, you've come back, now you're listening, <laughs> now you're sharing, now you're asking questions, now you're seeking. This whole story is about God, the Creator, wanting a relationship with you. And He says, I'm willing. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You don't have to do a thing. I'm willing to take your place. Yeah, you've done wrong. We've all done wrong. We've all messed up. No one in here is perfect. And the creator of this universe says, I'm willing to take your place. I'll pay the price. In fact, that's what the cross, that's why we celebrate the cross. Because the place of your shame, the place of your regret, is the place of his grace. And you don't have to earn it. The place of your failure is where you can find forgiveness. See, God's for you. G Jesus is God, big G. One and the same. He died on the cross for you. Because he wants a relationship with you. And guess what? There's an empty tomb. <laughs> and he got back up out of the grave for you. There's victory and hope. That's why we celebrate Easter because he didn't stay dead. 
That's what separates Christianity from all other religions. You go follow the leaders of any other religions, they're still buried. Jesus, he got up. He got up for you. He got up for me. He got up for the world. And it doesn't matter what you've done, how bad it was, what you've said, what you did. He loves you and he's doing it all. The whole story is coming full circle to you and he wants a relationship with you. And you'll find, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know this. I was holding on to so much. I found life. I found hope, I found freedom, I found purpose. I found what my next step is when I surrender and say, I'm going to live for you, Jesus. Who are you, Jesus? That's the question that we got to ask. Jesus, Jesus asked Peter this question, who do people say that I am? And that's the question he asks you. Some of you today, right now, you might be saying, you start to stir in your heart a little bit. Kind of like, I can't quite check the atheism box. I've had some, I had some church issues, some real church issues, but church has never been about people. It's always been about an event, the resurrection, that God loves you and wants a relationship with you. The church, Freedom Church, we are far from perfect. I'll jack it up. We'll jack it up. I mean, we don't intentionally try to do that, but it's not about the people. It's about celebrating Jesus. And right now you might be saying, well, okay, I want a relationship with God. What do I got to do? It's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. As we close out, I want to I want to read this to you. Because this this is this one this one helped me so much. It says by grace. How do I do this? It's by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift. You receive a gift. You don't work for it, you don't earn it. It's not by works, so that no one can boast. Listen. The bottom line, if we, if, if we live in a godless world, there's no, no you, no value, no justice. And if we're honest, we don't live like that. None of us do. All other religions, if you want to boil them down, you got to work for it. You got to earn it. It's do, 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 do. If you want to earn favor with the God or gods, you got to work for it. You got to earn it. Christianity is the only one that says it's done for you. It's by grace you have been saved through faith. Well, what's this faith piece? Well, you put that into practice every day. You put faith into practice today when you took up your coffee. You had faith that your spouse didn't try to poison you with it when you took a drink of it. You just drink it. You have faith in the government. You're like, no, I do not. Are you going to take that stimulus check? Are you going to spend it? Are you going to trust when you put it in the, in the bank account that it actually, the government's going to back what's in there? When you take a dollar bill and you slide it across the counter, you, you, you have faith that there's backing behind it. Here's what I know about faith. Here's what I know about faith. You don't get to experience the full reality of something until you place your faith in it. This is what it means to have faith in Jesus. Like, I know about Jesus, I want it. But you don't get to experience the full reality of a relationship with the God, the creator of this universe. And that's what he wants until you put your faith totally in Jesus. Then you'll know who he is. Then you'll know that he is who he claims to be. And I know that's the rub right there i got to put my faith and trust in him. These guys put their faith and trust in Jesus as the Messiah. They saw him die. They saw him live. Many people have died and lived and done great things and said great things, but then they saw him rise again. And then they went and changed the world. They said, this guy's God. He's the, the Messiah. So if you want to put your faith in him today, there's one more verse and then we're going to pray and close. says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You're like, no, 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 not me, Mike. I'm too far gone. I walked away. I've done some things. No way. Paul, who wrote this, was a murderer. He murdered Christians. And he's writing a part 
of the Bible. No one is too far gone. That's why Jesus came. He paid the price for your sin. And he's speaking to you today. What's Jesus speaking to you right now? If he's speaking to your heart, what's he speaking to you? It's not condemnation. He's speaking to you saying, I love you. He's speaking to you saying, it's okay. You can let go. You can let go of the anger. You can be free. You can forgive. It's really, really hard. It's really, really hard. You don't have to keep searching because I satisfy. What are you holding on to that's dead right now? Jesus is saying, I'm the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I wish there was another way. I would tell you. I would tell you in a heartbeat. Oh, there's another way. But it's Jesus. Faith in Jesus. And the good news is, the good news is you don't have to earn it. You just receive it. It's by grace. It's a gift. So I'm going to ask you right here, right now. While you're watching on your mobile device, while you're watching on your laptop, while you're watching on a replay, today's the day. Put your faith in Jesus. Accept him as your Savior for the first time. You can reject him. That's an option. You can say, no, I don't believe it. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't believe it. That's fine. Keep asking questions. Let's, let's have conversations together. I'm not ever going to cram it down your throat. I'm going to tell you what I, what I believe, what I believe the scriptures say. That's my job as a pastor, but I'm just going to love regardless. So one option is you can reject it. Another is you can put it off. You're like, you know what? Not today. But then again, you're putting your faith that we have another day. We're, we're not promised that. One day we will all meet Jesus face to face. And at that point, it will be too late. So what I'm going to ask you to do, if he's speaking to you today, if you've never had a relationship with Jesus, you've known about him, but you've never had a relationship with Jesus today, I'm going to ask that you would say yes and accept him as your savior today, that he's your Lord, your master. He'll come into your heart. He's so willing. He'll forgive you. He's willing to forgive you. And he's, he'll change your life when you put your faith in him. So with everyone with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's pray this prayer together. You can pray it out loud. This prayer does not save you, but if you want to give your life to Christ here right now on Easter Sunday, COVID-19, 2020, I'm watching from home, but I'm going to change my life for eternity in a moment. I want to give my life to him right now. Some of you guys are already doing it, but here's a prayer we can all pray together. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but today, today, Easter 2020, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. Jesus, come to, into my life to be my Lord my Savior, be my forgiver. Jesus, in the best way I know how, I receive you and I receive salvation. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 And if that was you today, I just want to say thank you for letting God speak to your heart and responding Maybe some of you, you're coming back to church and you're like, hey, I've already given my life to Christ, but I've been searching for the living among the dead and he's bringing me back. He's bringing me back full circle. I need, to, I need some change. I need to take some next steps. So here's what I need you to do as a pastor. There's a couple options that you can do. One is right now, if you, if you accepted Christ as your savior for the very first time, just type in Jesus on the comments and we'll follow up with you. All right, we, I need a way to follow up with you so we can help you take some of those next steps. If you're like, no, I just, I've already had Jesus, but I need to take some next steps. Just type in next steps in the comment. So Jesus or next steps. I need to take some next steps and we'll connect with you and follow you up with you and get you some resources. If you're like, hey, I don't want to put that in the comments. You can message us or when this is done, just in a few seconds, we're going to have a, 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 a phone number where you can text in. It's going to go right to me. And uh, we would love to follow up with you and connect with you on resources. You don't go this alone, all right? You do not go this alone, and we want to help you. We want to celebrate with you, and we want, we want to see God do amazing things in you and through you. There, there's freedom to be found in Jesus. There's hope. There's purpose. There's life to be found in Jesus. And that's what we celebrate, not just on Easter, but every single day. Freedom, it's a great day. Freedom, he's alive today. Let's celebrate today. Share this message with somebody today. Let's keep it going into the week. I, we've got coffee with the pastor tomorrow. You guys have been killing it in our online group. If you haven't been in there, jump in. It's social media like it's supposed to be. It's social media that's not just memes, that's not just complaining. It's like we are building each other up 
people you're dropping videos on there doing an amazing job so jump into the freedom online group maybe that's your next step and let's get plugged in and let's do this thing together because god wants to do something big in you and through you well i believe i totally believe that the best is not behind us no 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 the best is still to come for you for us and we're gonna we're gonna throw a big freaking party when COVID 19 is done we're gonna celebrate together one day and I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you guys for joining us this Easter. I'm going to start a countdown because I don't know what crazy video is going to come on the other side of this. So again, follow up. If you got a next step, put it in the comments or text it. If you gave your life to Jesus, we want to celebrate with you. Text the word Jesus. You'll see it on the next screen. Jump into the Zoom after party. Um, and then also jump into the Freedom Online group. We got stuff happening all day long, all week long. I love you guys. This is my favorite church. Have a great week, and we will see you online soon.